What I have here on the bench today is an HP 8620C sweep oscillator with an 86245A 5.9 to 12.4 GHz RF plug-in module. It was advertised as working on the original eBay listing, so I was hoping to first show you guys the sweep in action before moving to the teardown. But uh, I did try to turn it on just before I started recording, and uh, nothing appeared to happen. Uh, the weird thing is that uh, it appears that the power did not actually even reach the transformer at all, because uh, there was no reading on the power meter when I first uh, turned it on. And uh, also I can show you, there doesn't appear to be any um, resistance even after I power it on and off. So I will show you that it's just in one short second. So I just turned it around and here's the uh, back of the unit and uh, now it's plugged in. And by the way, I did check the uh, fuse and I will show you, oops, I will show you. And uh, let me just uh, power on the meter here. So the fuse um, in this compartment, as you can see here, this is actually uh, working. And uh, so now this is powered off. So we would expect these two terminals here, there's no resistance, which is uh, correct. And now if I turn it on, so I would expect that uh, we measure some kind of re resistance because of the primary of the transformer. But uh, again, there's nothing. And as you can see here, it doesn't appear to be anything. So looks to me there is some mechanical problem with this uh, unit. So unfortunately, um, uh, right now I don't know what it is, but um, we almost likely will have to take it apart and uh, see what is going on. So clearly there's some uh, investigation to do. Anyway, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed, but uh, nevertheless, it shouldn't prevent us from taking it apart and take a look at what's inside. And by the way, the HP 86 20 series of uh, sweep oscillator appeared to be first introduced in the early 1970s. And according to the uh, manual dates on the uh, Keysight website, the C version, which is the one I'm, I'm having here, uh, appeared to be introduced a few years later, in 1975. So the unit I have here looks really new, and uh, I mean, well, newer, not new, but uh, so I wouldn't be surprised that it was manufactured at a much later date, but uh, we'll find we'll find it out once we open it up. So I have already removed the two screws here, and we should just be able to slide this off. And here we go. And for those who have been watching my teardown, this is roughly from the same era as the, say, uh, the 8671A synthesizer that I did a teardown with last time. So it looks pretty similar, the construction uh, inside. Basically, we have all these uh, plug-in units. And by the way, this, this end is the, uh, the RF plug-in, which we will take it out later. But um, just from here, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six plug-in boards, and there's one missing. And I believe this one actually has a uh, option, so I'm thinking that this probably is the option board, and uh, not that uh, any board has been taken out. Um, the first thing I saw is that here we have this uh, uh, October first, nineteen. Oh, sorry, October thirteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. So this unit is actually very, very uh, new compared to uh, the first release date of this uh, series of uh, sweep oscillator. And I'm actually surprised that uh, this thing got more than 15 years uh, lifespan. And for any product, that's uh, quite significant. So judging from uh, everything looked inside, it doesn't look like there's anything obvious that was wrong. And uh, unfortunately, the mechanical switch here um, as you can see, it's uh, towards the front of the unit, and I probably needed to remove this panel before I can have access to that switch. But uh, for now, let's just take a quick look at uh, um, what is inside. And probably in another video, we can do troubleshooting and try to figure out if we can restore this unit to its original functionality. Now, so we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, 
six boards here and uh, the first board I think is a sweep generator board so let's take this out and uh, take a quick look and uh, uh, if I can take it out okay it's a little bit tight but uh, and these appear to be some op amps, as you can see from the uh, the leads output, uh, the leads here. And um, so these are some metal can transistors. Unfortunately, everything is again um, most of the things here, as you can see, are coded according to the HP part number. So I don't know off my head. But some of these are uh, you, you can see here. These are the 74 series. Um, so those are probably just some digital logic boards, but. Uh, in the middle here, this is probably either a, uh, I'm just guessing, an op amp or something like that, but it's a ceramic package, so it is probably a, a special part here. Anyway, and we have some adjustments here to, as you can see here, is uh, range sweep, uh, some return offset, and these are used to fine tune the uh, sweep characteristics. So let's move on to the next board, and uh, the next board, I believe, is the uh, what they call a frequency control unit. And uh, wow! So the first thing you see is uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All these relays here, and these are for switching on and off, uh, not the channels, but uh, different uh, ranges, I, I believe. And we have all these trim pots here for fine adjustments. Again, um, all these LT parts here are uh, feels like a ceramic. Maybe they're not ceramic. These are actually uh, just uh, this could be ceramic too. But anyway, so th these are probably op amps. I'm guessing here. And that's the second board. So the third board here is the logic board assembly. And uh, so probably nothing exciting, too uh, too exciting to see here. And again, we have all these parts that are marked with HP part number. And there's a relay here. So you know, it's an old school type of a board layout. And uh, of course, we have this uh, made in USA. And now nowadays, you don't see this very often anymore. So now let's move on to the power supply boards. And uh, this one, not power supply boards, but the regulator boards. So this one does have a, a couple of regulator boards, which are seated right here. So let's uh, take a look at one of them. Oh, did you see this? Uh, so this might be one of the reasons, well actually it won't be the entire reason why this uh, unit is not working because it doesn't even um, have a slight uh, hint of uh, powering on. But anyway, so here we have some problems. As you can see, the uh, these caps um, is actually 87, the 15th week. So these caps have some issues here. And uh, interestingly, these seems to have a I don't know if it's over voltage or something but it doesn't seem like it because uh, if you look at here it uh, seems that they're just leaking they somehow over time they started leaking and uh, so clearly this unit won't work anyway but uh, I hope it uh, didn't do any damage um, when we initially powered it on but since the uh, unit was marked as a uh, used one and it was working so I tried, but uh, as you can see, it didn't uh, power on. But anyway, so this is a the power supply board providing the uh, uh, different voltages for uh, your egg oscillator on the plug-in up here, and uh, some other uh, voltages. So we have to uh, at least fix this before we can move on. Uh, interestingly, you can see these fuses here. And these fuses, uh, let me try to see if the fuses are, hang on. So let me see if the fuses are still intact. The good thing is uh, this kind of board has the fuse um, test points here. So it looks like the fuses are fine. So 
So we have to uh, keep researching to see what the problem is. Anyway, so now let's move on to the next board, which is uh, another power supply board. And ah, uh, we can see the same problem here. So you can see that uh, this uh, capacitor is dangling here. And um, surprisingly, some of the other capacitors are fine. So I wonder what was the cause of that. This is the negative uh, 15 volts rail. I'm not sure if it's because the rail uh, had some over voltage, which would be bad because it would uh, destroy some other con uh, connected uh, components. But uh, uh, that is interesting. Now I remember back in the somewhere in the 90s, uh, there was a capacitor plague. And uh, so the story goes as uh, somebody, well, the Taiwanese company apparently uh, stole the recipe of some electrolytic capacitor and started building them. And apparently the, uh, the ingredients are not quite right. So over time, some of the capacitors used in motherboards and computers started uh, leaking and bulging and causing failures. But uh, this is actually way before uh, that capacitor plague happen. So I wonder if there's some um, problem with this batch of uh, capacitors. But interestingly, uh, you can see that again, this is in uh, the negative rail. So I'm not sure if there's any correlation, but we certainly have to figure out uh, later. So now we have another board is uh, another control board here. And uh, let's take a look. This one does have a connector here, so let me remove that first so before I can take out. And uh, this one, uh, I'm actually not sure what this one is. Uh, I probably should just check the manual, but uh, but we have a nice heat sink here, and we have okay. So at least this uh, we can see that this one controls the fan. So maybe it's some kind of controller. And it also has a one kilohertz uh, signal uh, adjustment here. So again, it's pretty neatly laid out. And this one doesn't have any leaky capacitors. So now I'm a little concerned because um, we do have a lot of places having um, capacitors here. For example, if you look at uh, the front panel here. Let me just uh, move it around. And uh, we do have uh, more capacitors tucked in underneath. So I'm not sure if I have to replace all of those, but if I do, that's going to be quite a bit of endeavor because to remove that board out is um, going to take some effort. So before we do that, actually, that might just be another video altogether because I think um, I probably won't have time to, uh, to do all these this time. So now let's uh, move on to the uh, RF unit, the plug-in side. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have uh, different plug-ins to cover different frequency ranges for this uh, sweep oscillator. And uh, this is actually quite neat how it works. And it has a lever here. And if you can see here, if I pull this, it should come out. And uh, yes. So different types of uh, plugins are mated to the same uh, connector here so that uh, for that interface you can change uh, different uh, ones. Now this is the uh, 5.9 to 12.4 gigahertz one. And uh, so how the IG oscillator works basically is uh, it's an IG tuned um, filter essentially and you have the RF signal coming in and depends on the tuning voltage you have the, uh, the yttrium iron garnet uh, resonate at a different uh, frequency and uh, we have a uh, teardown of that in my WaveTech 907 teardown article that I uh, have on my website. You can take a look if you're interested. But uh, for this one we have the oscillator portion and uh, oh by the way so this is actually a uh, the, the ring for lifting this board off and uh, the person that was nice enough when this came off to tape it on top of this unit, but uh, that's what it is for. So I may be able to find a pin and uh, put it back later, but uh, right now it doesn't really matter. So let's take a 
a closer look at this uh, egg oscillator unit. And uh, the main uh, egg filter is uh, the drum unit down there. And um, so we have some supporting circuitry for FM coil tuning and uh, the input RF signal. So now let's follow the uh, signal path here. And we have this uh, oscillator uh, right here. And uh, the output is this rigid coax. It goes through a RF isolator and feeds into this power amplifier. This power amplifier is a uh, gallium arsenide uh, field effect transistor based and it's very sensitive to static electricity. That's why you, you see here, uh, caution, do not remove cover. Static discharge could cause damage. And I'm not sure you can read that. Anyway, so once this comes out um, of this, it passes through another isolator and a part of that goes through a detector. Uh, basically, this is forms of the automatic uh, level controlling circuitry for controlling the output uh, uh, power. And uh, part of that goes out to the output. So where is that? Uh, let's take a look. The directional coupler here. And uh, hang on, so I, I don't know if I can sh show you here. The directional coupler is right down there. So I'm thinking the main output is actually going through the other side. So let's take a look. Yep. So that's the uh, main output from the, di the uh, directional coupler. And uh, as you can see, we coming, we're coming out right to this uh, output RF uh, end connector. So the, uh, oh, here we can see it better. So a small portion, the uh, minus 16 dB portion is uh, taken to this uh, detector and uh, for driving the ALC unit. So everything is quite uh, neat. And just for completeness, I removed the bottom panel so you can see the uh, bottom of the PCB here. I took a look at the manual and uh, it has a significant portion on how to remove the front panel, but uh, it didn't say anything about removing the rear panel. So I have to figure that out because uh, it seems that the power entry is right here and uh, there's no obvious way besides to remove the whole entire uh, the bat support here to get to the uh, actual power entry module unit itself. And also it appears to me that uh, in order to do that, I have to remove the bottom board, which is uh, uh, we have several bolts, uh, se several screws that bolted from the other side. So I have to take a look at that and all these uh, edge connectors need to be removed, obviously. But that's something that uh, I need to take a look in another video. Now I hope you enjoyed this uh, short teardown video and uh, if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.